Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing this phrase, flattening the curve, which you've probably heard if you've been following the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to talk about what it really means to flatten the curve. What does that mean? So here's a graph down here. You've probably seen something very similar to this. Let's talk about this graph. On the horizontal axis right here, this is really time since the outbreak. Okay, So this red dot right here represents the outbreak, time equals zero. That's the onset of it. And then the vertical axis up here, the daily number of cases in terms of number of people, let's say. Okay. And I've got two curves here. I have a curve here that seems to spike upward much more quickly, and then it goes down much more quickly. It's the taller of these two. We'll call it curve one. We have curve number two, which has the same onset time, but this one doesn't go up near as quickly, and then it also doesn't go down near as quickly. But notice that the peak of this curve, which we'll call curve number two, is well beneath the peak of curve number one. And so the first thing I want to talk about is really what each of these is. Okay. So first of all, what does each curve represent? Well, curve number one, the sharper or steeper curve, this would be the case, what we would see in the case of a pandemic in a particular area, if the pandemic developed without measures that slow the rate of infection. Obviously, if there's an outbreak of some kind of virus or some kind of deadly pathogen, we want to slow the rate of the infection. Okay? If we don't do anything to do that, we would get a curve that looks like this. The second curve here, which is much shallower, has a much lower peak. This would be the case if the pandemic developed with measures that slow the rate of infection, but those would have to be ready early in the outbreak. So number one is without measures to slow it. Number two is with measures to slow it. Okay. So now I'm going to switch to this slide right here, and I've added some things into the same graph. So let's look at curve number one. Here's the peak of curve number one. So this dotted line right here, the peak, this is really the max number of cases without protective measures because that's what curve rep one represented. Pandemic development without measures to slow the rate of infection. So at this point on the graph, this is the maximum number of cases of infection without those protective measures. For curve number two right here, I have another dotted line and this represents the peak of curve two, which is the maximum or peak number of cases in the case where we have protective measures that slow the rate of the infection. Now, obviously, you can see from this graph, it may be obvious before this, that the peak number of cases with curve number one is much bigger than the peak number of cases we had with curve two. And so notice, if we have two identical situations, one without protective measures, one with, we have a pretty sizable reduction in the maximum number of cases at a given time. Now, before we go any further with this, in particular these two bullet points down here, I want to explore something else. What do these two curves even mean? Okay. Well, each curve represents the total number of affected individuals as a function of time. In other words, at let's say this first time point right here in pink, if I asked you, well, in case one, how many people were affected that particular day, okay, if this is in days? Well, I would just look at this point, and I would say, well, this number of people right here were affected on this particular day. And so whatever day is represented by T3, you can see this many individuals were infected. And so what you can see pretty clearly is that there were more individuals affected on whatever day is represented by T3, then the number of infected individuals on whatever day is represented by T1. You can also see here that on whatever day is represented by T2, this was the day when the maximum number of infections took place. Okay? So the point is, what each curve represents is just the total number of affected individuals as a function of time. Okay? Now here's a question, what about the total area under each curve? What is the total area under that? What does that represent? The area under this curve bounded by the horizontal axis. Okay? Well, it turns out the area under the curve, if you determine that total area, represents the total number of affected individuals over that time interval. Okay? 
So the question I have here for you is, does curve number one represent more affected individuals than curve number two? But it would be practically impossible to tell the area underneath this curve, right? Because it's an irregular shape. The same thing goes for the second curve. So what if instead we change to these curves that are regular in shape, curves in one over here and two over here on the right? Well, if I asked you to calculate the area under these curves, we'd need to bound the bottom. That would just be with the horizontal axis. And you'd need to know the heights and the lengths. And if you have that, you can calculate the area. So let's say this box has a length of 2 and a height of 8. And this one has a length of 4 and a height of 4. And of course, these are not drawn to scale. And again, it's the same thing. We've got on the vertical axis a daily number of cases. And on the horizontal axis, the time since the outbreak. Okay? And what you can see here is that clearly curve number 1 is taller. Curve number 2 is shorter. But does that necessarily mean that the total number of affected individuals is different? You might say one would have more affected individuals, but the total number of affected individuals is the area under the curve. How do we calculate area? Length times height. These both have the same area. 8 times 2 is 16, and 4 times 4 is 16. So in other words, just by flattening this curve, we elongate it, and that brings it down. That doesn't necessarily change the area under the curve. In other words, it doesn't necessarily change the number of people total that were affected. And that's an important point. Now, in real life, maybe the second area would be bigger. Maybe the second one would be smaller. But the point is, when you flatten this curve like this, it doesn't necessarily change the area under it, and that means it doesn't necessarily change the total number of affected individuals. So if we go back to this figure right here, does one necessarily represent more individuals? Not necessarily. Even though it's a taller curve, it still could have the same area under it as the second curve. And so if we're not changing the total number of affected individuals, why do we even care to implement uh, protocols that reduce the rates of infection? Well, it has to do with the capacity of the healthcare system. Here we go back to our original figure right here. Okay? Remember what we talked about. In curve number one, this was the peak number of cases when we had no protective measures implemented. Curve number two, this line right here, this represents where we had the max number of cases with protective measures implemented to slow the rate of the infection. This blue line right here, this is the healthcare capacity. In this second curve, it may still have the same area under the curve as curve one, meaning one and two may actually have the same total number of affected individuals. Maybe two even has overall more affected individuals over the time period. However, over this entire curve, it never once exceeds the healthcare capacity. And that's why a lot of people are concerned about not implementing proper protective measures. Because even though over the course of this time, more people could be affected than in the case of curve one, there is no one case or day where the number of cases exceeds the healthcare capacity. You can test it on curve two right here. You can test it at the peak, at the end. At no time do the number of cases per day exceed the healthcare capacity. However, in the cases without protective measures, notice that at this point right here, all the way to the peak and then back down to this point, that part of the curve everywhere exceeds the healthcare capacity. So maybe initially it doesn't at the onset of the outbreak. However, very quickly what we see is that without protective measures, we exceed the healthcare capacity. And that can lead to significant problems. And so when we say flattening the curve, what do we mean? We don't necessarily mean reduce the total number of affected individuals over the entire course of the pandemic. That's not what we're talking about. Okay? It'd be nice if we could reduce the total number of infected individuals. However, what we're really concerned about by flattening the curve is basically making it shorter, 
So it doesn't exceed the healthcare capacity, and normally what will happen is it will elongate. So it may take a longer time to be eliminated to where everybody gets rid of the infection, everybody's healthy again, it runs its course, but the important thing is in the second case right here with protective measures, we don't exceed the healthcare capacity. And so hopefully this video with our abstract concepts here and diagrams has helped you understand what it means to truly flatten the curve. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the four major rotator cuff muscles. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.